Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about vectors, section 7.7 in our book. Okay, so the first question asks us to find the component form of the vector u with the initial point negative 2, 5 and the terminal point 3, 7. So basically when they're talking about vectors, and I've got, um, I've got these definitions in the PowerPoint that accompanies the video, so don't worry if you can't read it so well here, it's going to be in the PowerPoint. Basically, our vector, and whatever we're calling it, in this case we're calling it u, the definition calls it v for vector, but either way, it's basically slope, okay? We're taking our x values, subtracting them, taking our y values, subtracting them, the resulting vector v is what we will get. So, given these two points, I want my vector u, and that's going to be equal to x2 minus x1, that's going to give me my x coordinate, and y2 minus y1, that's going to give me my y coordinate. So my vector u is going to give me 5, 2. Now, what does this really mean, this vector? All it means is how am I getting from this point to this point? So to, so to show you graphically, negative 2, 5. It is my first point and the terminal point three, seven. That's my terminal point. So my vector u looks like that. Okay, it goes from this point to that point, And that makes sense, right? Because my vector u is five, two. So I go over five, up two, basically slope. So it's not too hard to comprehend. Second part of this question, okay? gives us the vector 3, 7. So they're telling us what our vector is. And we have this initial point, 2, 4. I want to know the terminal point. So a couple ways we can do it. We can do it algebraically by using the definition of vector that we were given before. Or we can just sketch it because we know that vector is really just slow. I'm going to show you the algebraic way. Then I'll show you the graphically way. So uh, we know by definition, v equals x2 minus x1 y2 minus y1. In this case, we're given the vector b. So we're given 3, 7 is equal to, and we don't know our x2 value, our terminal point. Okay, we just know the initial point. So we're going to plug in for our x1 and our y1. Okay, so then we know well, 3 has to be equal to x2 minus 1, right? Because that has to be my result of x2 minus 2. And then um, we know that 7 has to be equal to y2 minus 4, because we know that has to be the result. y2 minus 4 has to give me 7. So all I have to do algebraically is set 3 equal to x2 minus 2, and 7 equal to y2 minus 4, and then solve for x2 and y2, and then I'll come to my terminal point. So all I do is add the 2 to the other side, so I get x2 equals 5. And if I add the 4 to the other side, y2 equals 11. So therefore, my terminal point was the point 5, 11. Now, we can do this graphically as well. If I start with the point 2, 4. And remember, I say just think about a vector as sort of a slope, but with a direction. Okay, so we know this is 3, 7, means I'm going over 3, up 7. So that's my vector V. Notice, I came to the, the same terminal point that I found over here, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I got to the same point. So whether you want to do it graphically or algebraically, we can find our terminal point. Final part of this question is to sketch multiple representations of the vector w, so basically slope 2, 3, with the initial points given, so four different initial points. And I'm going to try to do each of these uh, points in a different color. So A starts at 0, 0, and then I have the vector 2, 3, so I go over 2, up 3, okay, so that's my A with my vector w. Next. Uh, I have B that starts at 2, 2, and then again I have the vector 2, 3. So I go over 2, 
up three. Okay, and that's B. C. So C starts at negative two, negative one. That's C. And it goes over to up three. And then D uh, is at one, four. And that just goes over to up three. Okay, so that's basically definition of a vector and how you can draw it. Next question asks us to find the magnitude of the vector. Basically, the length, the distance. That's all this is finding. And if you notice the definition of magnitude, it has to be the absolute value, right? So we're never going to get a negative value anyways because we're squaring. But uh, they represent the magnitude with these two absolute value symbols, okay? That's what it means. So sometimes they might just say, find this, okay? Or find this, if you can see it better. That just means find the magnitude, find the distance of that vector. How much distance is that vector taking up? Okay, so it's basically just the distance formula. This one should be real easy. All you do is say, okay, well, my magnitude of u, that's supposed to be a u, uh, I just plug in for a and b, okay? So that just means I plug in 2 squared, not a comma, but rather a plus 3 squared. Okay, so that just gives us square root of 4 plus 9, which gives us the square root of 13. So that just means that distance that u covers, that vector, is the square root of 13. That's how much distance it covers. Okay, so same thing over here. I want the magnitude of v. So I get 5 squared plus 0 squared, okay, which gives me the square root of 25. I'll just throw in the plus 0 so we get the point. And the square root of 25 is 5. So that distance is 5 units. Okay, so that's all there is for magnitude. Basically the distance, real easy when we're asked to find the magnitude. Finally, uh, we can do algebraic operations on vectors. So we can add vectors, we can subtract vectors, and we can multiply a constant times the vector. So we can make it longer, shorter, we can combine two vectors. And let me show you what this looks like. So first, they've got us taking u plus v, given u and v here. Okay, so I want to find u plus v. That's going to be equal to uh, let's see, that's equal to two plus negative one. Okay, I'm adding my x parts, and then negative three plus two, I'm adding my y parts. Okay, kind of like slope again. Okay, it's not so different. So you're just taking, adding the first components, adding the x components adding the y components or the b components, right? So they call the first part a, the second part b, same as just x and y, okay? So that means uh, u plus v, negative two, or I'm sorry, two plus negative one, one, and negative three plus two, negative one, okay? So that is the result when I take um, vertex, I'm sorry, uh, vector u plus vector v. Now, let me show you what that means to graph it, okay? So what that looks like graphically, Okay, so we were given the initial value of u. Let me just show you. Initial value of u was 2, negative 3. Okay, so 2, negative 3. That's u, right? And since they didn't tell us a starting point, we're going to assume the starting point was the origin. And then our vector v was negative 1, 2. So that means from this end point, from this endpoint u, we are adding v onto it. So we're going negative 1 up 2. Okay, so v added onto u gets us to 1, negative 1, and in fact, that's the same point. 
So really, this green point here, just taking from the origin to one, negative one, is u plus v. It's the addition of both of them. Kind of hard to see, but when you do it on your own, you'll see how you add these vectors together. Okay, next one asked us to, uh, and let me do this. Next one asks us to take u minus v. Okay, so u minus v. Again, same principle. I take 2 minus negative 1. Okay, and negative 3 minus 2. So, again, that gives us uh, u minus v of uh, 3 and negative 5. So, again, let's graph it. And see what it looks like. Okay, so our u again started at uh, 2, negative 3. So that's u. Then we are subtracting v which v was negative 1, 2, so When we subtract v, it actually goes from the origin because we're not adding it on to u. So it's, it's, we're actually going the opposite direction and that goes um, negative one, two. So that's v. So that means the resultant vector of u minus v is that entire long blue vector there, okay? Next one. Uh, they want us to do two times u, so we're just going to make u longer. So two times two negative three. So that's pretty easy. You just distribute it like you would think. Okay, and that just makes u longer. I'm not going to keep drawing these uh, for the sake of time. Then next, negative 3v. So again, negative 3v. So negative 3v just make negative 3v just means I take negative 3 and I multiply it by v. Okay, so take the negative 3, distribute it. So we actually get 3, negative 6. Okay, so that just made, um, it makes V longer, but it also makes it go in the different direction because it was negative. So when you graph that one, you would see that. And finally, 2U plus 3V. Okay, so 2U plus 3V, I'm going to take 2 times U and then add 3 times V. Okay, so 2U plus 3V. I'm going to take first my 2 times 2, negative 3. Then I'm going to add 3 times negative 1, 2. Okay, and then 2 times 2, obviously, just distribute it in. And then we add them like we did before. So I add the a's, or the, the x-coordinates, you want to think like that, the first coordinate, and then the b's. So it gives us a value of 1, 0. 
So you can go ahead and check those graphs out and uh, see that the resultant force would be, in fact, one zero. So go ahead and practice the uh, accompanying example problems, and then tomorrow in class we'll go over them together.